Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm gonna be covering Hella. She made her first appearance in Journey Into Mystery, issue number 102 in March of 1964. She stands seven feet tall and weighs 500 pounds, having green eyes and black hair. Although she's generally considered to be an Asgardian because she is the Asgardian goddess of death, she was actually born in Jotunheim, the land of the frost giants, being the child of Loki and the giantess Angerboda. Now, although both of her parents may have been members of the Jotunheim giants, she has all of the typical superhuman abilities of an Asgardian woman, in addition to certain other abilities that pertain to her being the goddess of death. Now, Hela's strength levels are completely off the charts. They're far greater than most other Asgardians. She's proven her ability to go one-on-one -on -one with Thor, and therefore she's able to lift well in excess of 100 tons. She possesses superhuman speed, stamina, durability, extended lifespan, and a regenerative healing factor that's far greater than most other Asgardians as well. Hela also has the ability to control many different types of Asgardian magic for different types of purposes. She's proven her ability to astral project, and because of her Asgardian metabolism, she doesn't have any limitation on the amount of time that she can spend outside of her physical body. This being contrary to mortals that can astral project. Also, being the goddess of death, Hela holds the power of life and death over the gods of Asgard. When one of these gods die, their spirits apparently dwell in one of the other dimensional realms of either Hel or Niflheim, which are both under the control of Hela. The souls of individuals who die heroically in battle also remain within their bodies, but are accompanied by Odin's Valkyries into Valhalla. Here, the deceased heroes can lead a new physical existence. Hela often accompanies these heroes on their journey to Valhalla, but although over the years she's tried to extend her control into Valhalla as well, she has no true right to govern over them when they're there. Her power is really something to be considered because although she usually waits until an Asgardian is on the verge of death before she touches them or her to draw out their spirit from their body, she can also kill a perfectly healthy Asgardian with a touch if she chooses to. And if she can kill a so-called immortal or an extremely long-lived god with a touch, of course she can kill normal mortals with a touch as well. She can also project a magical energy blast that can cause its target to age or die even if it hits a part of the target's body that's covered by clothes. When you look at all these powers, it's very lucky for mortals that she typically doesn't mess with them too much. Her main prize are the souls of immortals. Hela also has an all speak, and so therefore she can communicate in all the languages of the nine realms, earth dialects, and various alien languages as well. And because she has all of these abilities, she rarely has to, but if ever needed, she is a very skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant, in addition to being a very experienced swordsman. But, like I said, because of her skill using her magical powers in combat situations, she rarely has to get her hands dirty. Despite her extremely powerful nature, she does have a weakness. Hela normally wears a cloak, cowl, and headdress, and her body is fully alive and appears healthy when she's wearing this. However, if this cloak is removed, her true form is then revealed. The right side of her body is fully alive and appears beautiful, but the left side is dead and decayed. Without this cloak, her powers are drastically reduced, and it's understood that she's probably not even able to leave the realm of the dead without it. It has been shown that without her cloak, that her life force is not enough to maintain her usual physical strength, no longer being able to levitate herself, project mystical bolts, and can barely even stand or crawl. But as long as she's at least touching her cloak, she maintains a vast majority of her normal powers. If there's one thing, though, that a foe needs to watch out from Hela, is that in addition to all of her ability to levitate, time travel, create illusions, and all of this other stuff, the one thing that can lay anyone down is what she refers to as her hand of glory. And what this is is that she's able to channel all of her powers into her hand and then use it to make one single powerful strike that can kill just about anything we know of, be it mortal or immortal. Now, from Hela's very early days, she was considered a threat. The three Asgardian goddesses of fate, known as the Norns, are said to have warned the Asgardian gods that Hela would prove to be a great danger to them in the future. It's then that Odin made a declaration that Hela would become the goddess and ruler of the spirits of the dead on the day of her maturity. Of course, this is what led to her having dominion over the realms of Hel and Niflheim. Over the millennia, Hela's quest to have more and more Asgardian souls and have dominion over more and more realms led her into conflict with many different heroes. She's endured many battles with some of the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe, including Odin himself, Thor, the Olympian death god Pluto, 
and even Mephisto. Hell, it's even had run-ins with other mutants and mutates, such as the New Mutants and the X-Men when she tried to take Wolverine's soul, and has gone toe-to-toe with the Hulk as well. Now, due to her considerable powers and abilities, and her influence on the Marvel Universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Hella a rating of 10, which is a legendary rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe to The New Sage.